Hello, welcome to Lessons with Jack Thompson. This is uh, volume six in the Grand Fighting series, and this is Fighting from Your Knees. Um, there's lots of times when you end up in a kneeling position, although again, lots of people will say, I'm not going to be in that position. Usually the people that say that are, are uninitiated, they haven't actually been in many situations. You will end up on your knees, you'll end up in lots of positions. Um, you tend to end up on your knees more when you, uh, when you fall to the ground or when you're trying to get back up again. Okay, so these are some techniques from a kneeling position. As I've said with all the different tapes, uh, fighting on the floor is the last place you want to be because um, when you're on the floor you can only fight one person at a time. It's a very dangerous place to go down to. Um, you only have to get someone who's like dig roads for a living and who's had 10 pints of lager and you're going to have the fight in your life. That's why we need to address it because a lot, you know, lots of people make mistakes and they do end up on the floor. So although it's the strongest range, it's the weakest range outside because you're so vulnerable. While I'm fighting with um, one bloke, I'm getting kicked or stabbed by another. So it's a dangerous arena to be in. But like I said, you know, if you, if you get into it, it needs to be addressed. Uh, we're doing lots of these, you know, we're doing lots of these techniques from different positions on the knees. Um, don't try and think too much about the actual position because you will end up there. You know, if you start wondering about, well, when am I going to end up in that position? You're, you're going to lose the technique. Every position you're in, you need to have an escape from and you need to have a finish from. Two or three escapes, two or three finishes. So that you're never in a position where you're thinking, uh, I've never been here before. That's when you do your live grappling. I've had situations where I've started fighting, say, here, and then they look over in the corner, upside down, and don't even know what I've got there. That's how it is in real situations. Most of the real stuff is scruffy, it's ugly, the aesthetic stuff doesn't work. We're, we're working on techniques that work against someone who's trying to stop you. The other stuff's bollocks, because if someone lets you do something, everything will work. So what we're doing is we're working on the techniques, we're going to work with um, some drills with compliancy, but then at the end of the day, if you look at the Animal Day videos, volume one and two, you'll see how the techniques work against someone that is actively trying to stop you. Not only is he trying to stop you, he's trying to put techniques on himself. Okay? But not to forget that your bread and butter is your attacking, your atemi. When I'm down here, whenever I can, I'm going to whack him in the head, knee him, butt him, bite him. Um, if you don't want to do that, you know, don't step into the arena. You can't look at techniques and say, I don't want to do that one, I'll do that one, that's okay. I don't want to bite, no, I don't want to do that, I don't want to butt. All these techniques are legitimate. Okay? Um, the deception that you use to get these techniques on is all legitimate as well. Look at the, uh, you know, the great warriors of the past, like Masashi, Sun Tzu, they all use deception in bag force to get techniques on to win wars um, and to, to kill an opponent. Masashi would hide behind a tree to get the initiative on an opponent. So don't look at things and say that's dirty, that's not dirty. If it works, then you do it. You know, if, if uh, stopping a bloke beating you up and raping your wife means biting him, then bite his face off. Otherwise, stay out of the arena. Okay, we're going to start from the head-to-head -head position. Uh, basically, we've got the head-to-head -head position. We've got um, over, over the top, yeah, but underneath. And we've got from the side this, these positions. These are the different positions that we're going to work from. We'll start off with head-to-head. -head. As I say with all the videos, if you've got the chance to stand up from here, then stand up. But although we're looking at this scene, you're thinking, well, I'll just stand up. Well, if I stand up, what's to stop him pulling me down? What's to stop him standing up with me? He's not going to let you go. If you've ever been in a real situation, you'll know that a panic grip is really tight. Someone, somebody will, will rip your shirt off. You know, you can, you can butt him to the floor and knock him out and he'll still be gripping your shirt. A panic grip is really, really strong. So don't just look at these and think, I'll just stand up and kick him. He's not going to let you. You're working with an uncompliant opponent. So, First of all, if you can stand up, that's a good idea. If I can stand up and knee him to here, that's okay. But he's not going to just let me do that, because he knows if I stand up, he's going he's to get his head kicked in. So we start off on this position. We're working with neutral hands. It might be here, it could be here. You know, it, it could be like here, it could be anywhere. It doesn't really matter, we're just working from a neutral position. The obvious stuff from here is just to whack with your head, just boom, here. And as soon as you've done that, go to the technique, and go for a finish. Again, if you're coming close, biting is really immediate. The biting techniques 
and really immediately from here again, biting the face, biting the cheeks, biting the nose, and again, on the outside, biting seems a bit unsavoury, uh, but when you're actually there, you'll do it, because it will save your life, and it might save the life of your child or your wife, um, so do it, if you have to do it, do it, I'm not saying it's the first line of attack, we're saying do it if you have to, but, do, uh, but don't be put off by it. We've also got, uh, you know, the obvious eye attacks, there's not really any punching power from here, but we can come in and grab a larynx, again here, and if he's got a lapel, we can come across and get a lapel, he hasn't got a lapel on here, but if he's got a jacket on, then I'll come in deep and push into this way, or come in inverted and twist in this way, using his lapel here, um, and his collar there. So these chokes again are very effective, but more than anything from here, we're going to be facing off, whack, just put the head straight in. What I tend to do is if he's got something, if he's round the head here, is resist a little bit, and as he pulls, put the head in. And as soon as you get the distraction with the head, you'll get an instant distraction, and you can go and take a technique. Okay? Moving on from that, one of the more obvious ones, again, this works from a standing position, um, and uh, as well as a kneeling position, and that's just, just a snatch. And it's coming from here, just snatch it forward and then coming over the top. The first thing he's going to do from here is probably is grab my trousers or grab my leg. So what we do from here is just use, you know, just um, splay the legs back this way. Just to take the energy out of him. For a few seconds he's going to be a bull. He's going to be very, very strong. Again, so don't expect him just to stay there. He's going to be fighting around. So as soon as you get the snatch, you come into here. Okay. Just spread back. He won't keep his hands there forever because he can't do anything with them. And at some stage, you can come round and take a technique on the side. So again, what we're doing is just, what I tend to do before a snatch is push. So just push up and then come around. Just put enough energy in the muscles here and your biceps and that just to hold him. He's going to be trying to stand up and all the rest of it, but for now we just want to hold him here. We just spread away tap there. This can be combined again with an attack. Whack the head, pull down, and snap. And just pull, pull him over to there. That leaves you in a good position to turn him to the side. Turn to the side and go for a, for a hold. Uh, the arm drag takedown is again head in or elbowing. We're coming over the arm here and pulling down. Now make sure that I lie on the weight on top of him because from here I'm vulnerable with this arm. So what I've got to do is line my weight back and then come into the scarf hold position. Obviously these are working both sides. So what we're going to do again, I'm going to drive the head in, elbow, big elbow technique, whack it through, and then come to there. You've got to be dead wary of that arm, because he will grab you. So as you come over, just lie all your weight on top, and as soon as you can, Throw the arm over and come in for your hold. The opposite arm drag is when he grabs you across ways. Okay, and that's just coming across to here. Exactly the same, but just stepping through. Then again, lying on top. And you can get your arm through. So we'll do it from the opposite side. Uh, coming across here. Again, I'm going to punch him, hit him, and then down here, lean my weight on top so he can't grab me, and then underneath for the scarf hold. And then from here, we do all the positions that we've done in, in, the, uh, in the other tapes, I'm fighting from your back or fighting, attacking from, uh, from the pins, you know, the uh, escapes and all the rest of it. All the finishing techniques are on there. Similarly, what I can do here is just break his balance a little bit and put my foot there. What I'll do then is pull him over. If I don't put my foot there, what he's going to do is he's going to step across and stop me pulling. So as I try and pull him, he's going to do that. So to stop that, what I'll do is put that foot there. Then all I'll do is sit back, turn into the mount. And then again, pull, 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 and then go for your attack. Okay? We're coming in here. Notice when I land, I'm going straight to a defensive mount. I don't really want to go straight to here, 
because he's still going to be quite strong and he's going to try and buck and bronk and get me off. So we're going to have a defensive mount and practice all the techniques we did on the first volume, which is facing and attacking from the mount. Same again, if I can go over, over and under and lock this arm for a split second, put the foot there and just sit down and roll once more. Okay, but again, don't forget, whack him with the head, try this arm off. And sit through. Another one again is this arm comes high, it's to look underneath it and come across with a choke. You've not got great leverage, but the choke's there. And again, from here, just sit back and go into a mount position. Walk to a start hold position here to a jack mark position there. Look at that again. <coughs> Underneath, we come to here. He'll struggle, he might even push you over backwards. But it's okay because you'll have me well. From there, my right arm's right across his neck. Just to here, just to get the choke on. The next one we're going to do is, uh, is just bring your right leg up to here and then just sit the other leg down here. So again, I could, I could whack him with this, or I could bite him and bring it up, headbutt him, and then from there just sit through and flip over. Okay, so I can whack him and just roll over. A more obvious one, one that I do like to do a lot, is to, is to get this arm straight behind here. So we come into here, put the head into his face here, just drag it into his face and pull forward. And then come into a scarf hold position. And from there, again, you've got the numerous techniques that you can use from there. Again, these need to be practiced, but the most important thing is your head button. If you can get the arm free, big elbow techniques and then go for your techniques or then go for your techniques over your can. That was from the, the head to head position. What we're going to do now is move on to over the all fours, this position here. In theory this should be a really easy position to uh, to beat somebody off but if he's strong and he's and he's pulling it's going to be difficult and you'll get a grip on your trouser leg or get a grip on somewhere and he won't let go. So you need to know plenty of techniques. You need to know lots of techniques so that if one doesn't work, you can move straight on to another. A lot of the techniques from here uh, are good destroying techniques, um, especially if you can get a good choke on. But in theory, again, it's easy to put a choke through here and choke on. All he's got to do is shrug that shoulder inadvertently and you've lost the choke already. And when he's grabbing both legs, straight away I can't get the choke through. So if it is there, then you've got to take it. Obviously from here, everyone's going to be sitting there saying, oh, I'll just stand up from there. Well, I've been in situations like this where I couldn't stand up and I needed to, I needed to work on the floor. I've also been in situations like this where I didn't want to stand up because the bloke I've got on the floor is a, is a monster. I don't want to get back up. I want to stay down here because on the floor he's a mouse. And when I stand up, he's a monster. One of my friends was, uh, one of my friends was, was fighting um, in the Kai Kashinkai, um, which is renowned for being a hard system. And he was fighting a guy who tore pieces off him. The bloke was uh, rated in the world, one of the top in the world. And he, you know, he beat my mate up well and truly. At the end of the session, they did some back-to-back -back fighting. My mate destroyed the guy on the floor because he trained for the floor and the other guy hadn't. Now, if he was on the floor with the same bloke, if he had a fight with the same bloke, a real fight, and the flight hit the deck. Do you think he'd want to get back up and fight him or kick him? I don't think so. I think he'd want to stay down there because he knows the bloke's weak. And like I've always said, you know, you give me a chance to get back up, I'll take a kick in the head to get back up. And you get someone that's strong, and they will. They'll take a boot in the head to get back to the feet again. Just, to, just because he's here and I'm stood up, that doesn't mean that I've won the fight. It means I've got a free shot. But if he knows what he's doing, he'll take that shot, he'll cover, he'll get back up and I'll basically give him another chance. 
So the circumstances de de uh, determine whether or not we should get back up or stay down. <clears throat> and, the, and the person you're fighting, there's two or three people now I can think of that I wouldn't want to stand up and fight. But if I got them to the floor, I'd be quite happy. <clears throat> but from the all fours, the first thing that's likely to happen is they're going to grab your trousers here, like say, they get a grip on your trousers and, and you won't get the grip off. Okay, but it's quite vulnerable to the back. But again, adrenaline, 10 pints of Guinness, there's a lot to answer for. You know, they're, they're not going to feel a lot of pain. It might be hard to penetrate that, that kind of anaesthetic barrier. So the pain might not release him. But certain techniques will. You knock somebody out, it doesn't matter what they've had to drink. You knock them out, <clears throat> you know, with chokes and things. So, uh, first thing we're going to go for anyway, just bearing in mind that that's the danger, is reverse naked choke. And that is I'm going to come underneath here, just grip my own hand, and lift. If I can get it under, me, under there, even better. So you can see what I'm doing. What I'm actually doing from reverse is this. I'm just doing that. The same choke as we did on the chokes and strangles video. We come into there. So if you just look at that. I'm coming across the windpipe. I'm stopping the air. And believe me as well, if you've got no way of gripping this, if you've got no way of holding this on, it's not going to stay on. There's certain techniques that look really good, but they won't work because there's no way of holding them on. You need a technique where you can get some kind of grip or an appendage to keep it on. So what we're doing is we're coming underneath and we're grabbing our own hand. Slip the arm up. So you can see there, look, coming to there and just lifting up. It's a really, really strong choke. So if I can get his head underneath, doing the same again there. <clears throat> what we're going to do from there is, if I can't join my hands up, sometimes you can't join your hands up, it's quite difficult. This might be over here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to base on his back, come through and grab my own bicep. There, or my shoulder, or my lapel, and from there I'm going to fall. And that's the same again. You can't see on this side, but he's tapping over here. So as soon as he taps, I'm releasing. So, We've got the straight naked choke, come through with the shoulder base choke. Do it the opposite way, come into there, base in, grabbing my own shoulder or my own arm, and then just, just hug it. Okay? So we're coming across to there and just hug it. They're the most, they're the most dangerous techniques for me. If I'll just stand up a sec, stand up half. What tends to happen in these situations is people rug attack me at and you come to here. And quite often you end up in this position and you get the choke from there. Or you get rugged tackled and you come to that position and then you fil filter the arm through. So that's how you're going to end up there. If you're struggling, if you've got all of your legs and you can't get a choke on, you get big attacks right down the spine. Uh, they're really severe. I'm not saying it will stop them at the time, but it'll certainly feel it for weeks. You may not stop them on the day with this, but you'll put them out of work with it. Okay, because like I say, uh, it's sometimes hard to get through the adrenaline. So I will be attacking all the time, controlling the attack, straight down the spine. We've got hold of my legs, and I'm just going to come and leave his arm here. Even if he hooks on the leg, it doesn't matter. i just turn him. As soon as I turn him, I'm in a position like side full quarter, or back into the mount. That takes me into a position where I can attack, bum bum, back, all that, yeah. and turn him to finish him, punch him out turn him around or choke him out. These are all covered on the other videos, all these different finishes. This is mostly just getting them into the prone position from there. So I can turn him over onto his back, come into a mat position, the arm feeds through, go for an arm bar. Or I can turn him over to his back, come to this position, come through for a leg choke, this way. If you just see that, uh, you know, uh, just do that the opposite way out. Can just, uh, so I've turned it over. You can just see there. This arm comes over here. You come across. That's the figure. It's the uh, triangular leg show. I'm not going to go into the techniques of finishing from here. Just how to get my arm onto the back. So. You can also take the arm up, or take the arm up. Again, he's not going to just let us have it, but I can whack him, get the reaction, and sit through from the arm bar here. Okay, I, I don't expect to hold this too long. I don't like this arm bar. 
but it's a good way to get from one position to another. If I can pin it on, it will get a good shoulder bar on, but I'm more, I'm more inclined to take the arm bar and if he struggles to reverse mount, then go for the face bar on the choke. So, uh, we've, done, we've done turning over with the arm. We also turn over, lean forward and grab the ankle. You see, I've got his ankle here, look. And just turn. Same again. Put me into a prone position, go into a mount, into here, and then punch and finish off from there. Okay? So, what I'm doing here is just forcing back, grabbing his ankle. Just turn. Once he's turned, I've got him on his back again. What we can do as well from here is Fuji uh, Katami. Again, sometimes it's going to be here, sometimes it's going to be down here. Uh, it doesn't really make much difference for this, but what we're doing is hooking the arm here, okay, and just pulling through. There. I'll do that from this side. So we're hooking the arm here, just sitting through. And there's your arm bar again. Try it again. Hook the arm there. Just sit through. Pull him over. And come to there. So this is there my side. This is down by his face, so I can attack with it all. Just go for the arm bar. What we can go from there is uh, similarly just sit through for leg choke. This time I want to get his head better positioned so it's between my legs and come over and cover that arm. So I'm here. Uh, just trying to think of a. Coming from here, sitting through here. And just going for the leg choke there. Okay, go. So come to here, sit through there, and just tie up the leg. Just try and tie it up as tight as you can and squeeze with your thighs. You've also got the arm there for the arm bar as well. <coughs> Again, a lot of this depends on the energy that they're giving you. You know. If I turn him up to here and he pulls back down again, like this side, I pull him up here to turn him and he pulls back down, and I can take that energy and go for an arm bar or a shoulder bar. If I want to, if I want to turn, uh, for instance, come around that way, if I want to turn to a face bar to here, come over to the face bar, then he'll probably try and block me going around. So what I could do is. Go for an angle turn as he pulls back, and then pull me round. So I've come to here, pull him up as he resists, as he resists pull round. While I'm, if I try and come to the side, he's going to use that arm to block me coming round and stop me coming round. So to distract him, I'll pretend I'm going to turn him as he pulls down, and I come to the side for the face bar. Uh, What we'll do, can you just grab the, the lapel there now? We'll do a lapel grab. Again from here. I'm going to grab his lapel here. So you can see he's just hung up. It's there. He's got a jacket on or something. I'm going to grab the lapel and just come to the side here. So just turn around. As you can see, as I've come to the side, I've looped the lapel underneath. And then from there, just choke. Again, if he resists and pulls back, then I can grab hold of his arm here and choke again there. So it's a real good gagging choke that brings in consciousness really quickly. Like I say, sometimes I can get it from the knee position. Sometimes I can get it from here. I can just come from there, just pull his arm, just take the choke from there. If not, then I'll pull him over and pull everything in, push everything against him. Good. 
What quite often happens as well is the opponent grabs a leg. He'll grab a leg and try and push you over. What I tend to do is pull the leg back to break the grip. What you can do is, again, whack him here just to make him, just to do that. So as he, as he relaxes up, just sit through and come for the armbar again. You've got the armbar there again. So just look at that again. As he grabs the leg, whack in the back and sit through with your right leg. So just sit through there and you've got the armbar straight away. Again, if you don't get the armbar, sometimes this technique may be superfluous to what we're doing. Then you're straight into the rear mount. Look at that one for us. So grab the leg. Again, bang here. Sit through. You got the armbar. Just pull up on it. Or come into the reverse mount. Big elbow. Pull the armbar. Pull the choke. One of the ones I like to do a lot, especially if someone takes the leg, if someone, if I stand up, uh, so just jump up. what quite often happens if someone takes a leg throw, they grab the leg, is as they grab around the leg, you just come straight into a face bar. So, you show this way. After that, as they grab the leg, just come across here with the face bar, and it's straight on. You can pull him into the guard position as well. And look at that again. This is, works quite immediately, so as soon as he grabs, come to there. You need to keep the bone under the cheekbone, across the eye, across the nose, or even across the teeth. But from the side, I prefer to go there and crank the neck. The technique itself doesn't look much, but it's a real excruciating neck breaking technique. And again, you're going to bam it home. So you come into here, and if he struggles, just pull him over into your guard, and then put it on. And if I need to, from there, I can drop it into a choke. Just some of the defences from here, like we said at the beginning, if he grabs at the legs and pushes you back, just sprawl. Just have a rest, take. It's all I'm doing is spreading my weight, and I'm lying on the weight on top of him, so that he can't get up, can't push me back. If I'm here, too close, this is Angel, he'll push me back. And then he's on top. He's gone for the mount. So what we're looking at doing, as soon as we've took the hold, so if we do it from a standing position again, so if, if he's gone for a throw, it is to spread the leg right back until he's tired out. And then from there, I can start working on whatever position I want to go for, whether I want to go for the arm bars, or turn him, or just turn him over with a simple stroke, get him onto his back. It's also a good idea to grab sleeves. So when I'm underneath, I'll feed through and just grab his sleeve. That stops him being able to use that hand. Now because he can't use that hand, I can get to the side. So if I come through here, if he's there, and I grab his sleeve, and I want to come to the side, he can't stop me. Normally he'd stop me by putting that arm out. That stops me going to the side. So if I grab his sleeve here, wherever I can, when I try and go to the side, he can't stop me. So when I come to the side, yeah, I'm in a good position. Again, to go from the finishes. So, there are the different techniques you can practice from there. But don't be frightened to make your own up either. There's no rule with this, as long as it works. That's all that's important. As long as it works and you don't know it yourself. So try and make up a few yourself. There's no restrictions.
We're going to work on a few techniques from underneath the, underneath the all fours. And this is escaping from when someone's over the top of you. Again, it's not a pleasant position to be in, but it needs to be addressed. If someone grabs you in it, um, if you do some grappling, you'll be getting grabbed in it all the time. And outside, again, it's an instinctive place to grab people. I've seen many fights, I've witnessed thousands of fights, but I've, I've been in many situations where this position has, has become a neutral position where two people have stayed for like five minutes because neither has had an, an, an inkling of how to get out of it. I was the second at a uh, square go fight, a match fight between a boxer and a street fighter. Um, and this is the position they ended up in for quite a while. Uh, with the boxer over the top. Had he known how to finish from here, uh, had, had he known how to finish from here, he'd have won the fight straight away. Had the other guy known how to escape, he'd have beat the boxer, because this particular boxer didn't really have much idea of fighting on the floor. So that's one situation where the knowledge of this would have, would have made the difference between winning and losing. So let, let's not pretend, you know, one technique can mean the difference between winning and losing. So again, uh, if you doubt any of the positions that you're gonna end up in, do some live scrimmage, do some grappling, and you'll see, you'll end up everywhere. So this is just a couple of ideas, a couple of finishes um, from underneath the all fours. The best time to escape with any of these holds is as soon as they come on, because that's when he's just adjusting himself to actually defend the position. If you can escape as soon as you're into it, then that's the best time. So what I'm gonna do first of all is an immediate sit through. So as soon as he comes over and has hold, sit through and either hook onto the arm here, I'm coming for an arm bar, or just turn right round into um, a reverse mount position. Again, from here, I'm in a good position just to go back to the reverse mount. So look at it again, from here. All we're going to do, so if he's got his arms around me there, he's just going to push his arm through, hook onto here, and sit through, and push him down. I, like I've told you before, I'm not a big advocate of this particular arm bar. But if it's there, I'll take it and snap it off. But I'm not saying it's the best one. The best ones are really uh, like the Juju Gitami. That's the most immediate and the hardest to escape from. So I'm not concerned about taking the bar. All I'm concerned about from here is escaping. So I'm coming from here, just step through, and I'm coming to the side. And if I need to, I can come for a face bar or a choke. But the important thing is that I've escaped this hold, because when you're in this hold, it's very difficult. So the best time, I say, is straight away. Just sit straight through here, and then if you can't get the arm, you escape, and just turn to the side, and then go for your position from there. So I'll get that once more. From here. Again, it needs to be fast. You need to get it fast if he's holding tight. And it's just a matter of sitting through with your right leg, here, there. And then just turning and coming over to the, the same position as he's in, or to, depending on what energy he gives you. Look at it again. Come from there. Come back to there. That's an immediate situation. That's the best thing to do if you can get it straight away. If you've got it quite tight, then you can hook an elbow here. Hook his elbow tight, round the elbow. Sit through. And again, you've got the arm bar, but more, more positively, you're on, the, you're on the reverse mount, you're on top of it. If the arm bar's there, take it, so don't worry about it. Then we're hooking the elbow here, coming up onto this leg, sitting through, and then coming to there. Okay, and here, hook the elbow, hold it tight, so we can't escape. Sit through. And then go to your own position yourself. Do the same going the opposite way. So we do it from here. Put the same elbow, but rather than going that way to my own left, I'll come through this way. So I'll hook the elbow, and again just sit through and turn. Now I'm on the back. Again, it's still not going to let me go. This is when it's good, it's important that you've got the little finger bars to break his grip. So I'll just break his grip by grabbing his thumb and then go into a side four quarter or a lucky four quarter. So have a look at that one again. We'll do it from this side now. So the first one's to hook the elbow 
and sit through that way. Get the arm bar if you want. I'm not bothered about the arm bar, don't I like that one. Sit again. So that's just sitting through to here. Coming to there. Right, yeah. And the other side, we're coming here. It's sitting through, hooking the same elbow, and just pulling through, and turning onto his back, and then grabbing the finger to get the grip off, and then just turning, going for the other four quarter. If he hooks really tightly, which he probably will, it's a panic grip, if he hooks tight, really tight, then you don't need to hook the elbow. All you need to do is just sit through. So you can sit through to there, or sit through to the opposite side. So then you as you go tight, just sit through, and as soon as you can break the grip, come into your own position. Okay, just have a quick look at that again, the foot works the same. And that is over into there. Just off, off balance here. Turn the opposite way over this way. If it goes to this direction, and it's over. And just sit through and roll over. And as soon as you can break the pit, come to there. Again, if I'm underneath, I've got three hands. So I can aim at the nerve inside the leg here and just push at the nerve, or I can just grab at the groin. That will both force him to go back. As his legs go back, once he spreads his legs because I keep attacking them, he's dead vulnerable to turn. Okay, so we'll use a groin attack or hitting the nerve on the inside of the leg just to get him to spread back. As soon as he spreads back, I'll turn. Let's have one more quick look at that. So I'll just go for the leg, go for there. And then go from whatever, whatever hold I can get from there. The main thing is that I've, that I've turned him over. Okay, if we look at uh, working from the side now. If I'm working from the opponent's side here. Again, you're in a good position just to stand up and attack. But uh, without going over it and over it, that may not be the option you want. But it should be the option you take really most of the time because I can just stand up from here and just hoof him. Besides that, the, the most obvious one, the one that I like to do the most, is to come through and choke from here. So I'll just pull him over and just choke, pull him into my guard this way and get my guard and then I've got the choke or the strangle. Or a face bar, which is coming up to here. So again, with the face bar, the bone's right across his face. He's inside my guard. The bone's here across his face, so I'm cranking his neck. And when I'm coming from here, I'm grabbing my own bicep. You see that? Coming to there. And then I'm just scissoring down. And again, it doesn't look like very much, but uh, it's uh, really excruciating. So from here again, I can just drop into a choke, and the fight's over. He can roll around, do what he wants. If he rolls over, it doesn't make no difference because he's going to be choked out wherever he goes. If you look at this from this now, if you look at the footwork for that, well, it's important that when I turn him, he falls into my guard. Okay, because if he doesn't fall into my guard, he's got a good chance of escaping. Well, let's do the face bar. This leg comes up behind, so I'm going here. When he falls, he'll fall in between my legs. The other, the other knee, it's between his knee and his elbow, okay? So we're here. So as I pull him over with a face bar, he falls into my guard, and if we just sit up, the face bar's there, look. Okay? Again, with the face bar, you can come underneath the bottom layer of teeth there, which, have, which would snap the teeth up. Right across the teeth, which is very painful. Underneath the nose, which is excruciating as well. On top of the nose, here, or into the eye socket there. 
I go into the eye socket, I like to change the grip. So at the moment I'm doing this grip. If I pull that finger in to there, it makes that, that thumb protrude. And that thumb goes into his eye. It goes into there. And what it does, it feels like it's pushing the eye socket back into the head. The reason it feels like that is because that's what it's doing. And it's dead painful. So just look at that again. This is the face bar we're doing. Come across the cheekbone as well. That's very painful because there's a nerve just under here. Or if you come from the side, you can come across the ear. Wherever you go with this, it hurts. So that's across there, pull it in, across the teeth, under the nose, on the nose, which will, which will break the nose, change the grip into the eye. Okay, so if we look at the position again for the feet. So the feet are here. Now he's, got, he's obviously going to try and stand up from here, but if he, tries to, if he tries to stand up from here, as soon as he stands up, he's going to get pulled over because he's perfectly positioned for a choke. So the important thing at the moment is the legs. This is important because if I pull him over and he's not in my guard, I'm going to lose him. He'll wriggle out and will turn into a, uh, you know, on top, he'll turn so he's on top of me. So I come with the face, pull him inside my guard, wrap the legs around straight away. So as, as I pull this, I can pull on the legs to, uh, to make the, the attack more, more effective. Um, can you just grab the lapel there? Just do one with the lapel. There are lots of different ones with lapels, but uh, this is one that, that I favour. Again, we're working from the side, so we're uh, there. What I'm going to do is reach through and grab the lapel. Okay? And I'm just going to pull on that there and push on the head. That's a choke. It's not a great deal of leverage from here. And what will happen as soon as I do that is he'll start pulling back. So as he pulls back, I'll just pull over, hook his leg here, and really, you know, really pull the choke on. So again, this is a, this is a kind of horrible gagging choke if you put it on very quickly and it brings in consciousness but deep in consciousness quite quick. Ideally, if I can get the thumb here, deep into the neck, so that my thumb pushes on the neck muscle, I think it's the mastoid muscle, and the neck, it compresses the neck muscle, which compresses the, car the, uh, the uh, carotid artery, the carotid artery, sorry. And that's what stops the blood to the brain. So if I can get the bone of my neck into there, the bone of my thumb into that neck, it'll make it more effective. So as I turn, it's on straight away. And to make it more effective, I'll use this as a guillotine, my own arm, just to make it tighter. And I'm keeping this here because it's stretching him out as well and just pushing him. <coughs> Again, it's quite easy to feed through for that. So from here, just feed through, just pull. I come in with the legs with the choke and put the leg over just now. Uh, from this position as well, it just turns it sideways. Um, sorry, my fault. Just, just bear with us. <laughs> Working from the side again and pulling into Juju Gitami. Again, it's just a matter of coming under the armpit over here and just pulling across and going into the armbar to there. It's quite a good position to take it from. Okay, especially if he's down further here. Just tuck the arm here. Just step over pull down, it's a nice deep one here. As we pull down with the arm, push up with the hip. Again, as with the all, if he rolls over this way, I'm not taking him to reverse you your time. If he stands up, which is difficult, but if he does, then I'll get a standing Juju Tami and pull it back down to the floor for a straight Juju Tami. Okay? So just look at the footwork of that again. Now I'll just do it slowly with your teeth. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come underneath that arm and just step through here. Okay? And just from here, just let this knee, my left knee, slide across his back and pull him in. It needs to be fast, otherwise he's going to escape from it. From the same position, if I pull that up, I can come across his, his head 
and sit through here and get a, a triangle leg choke on as well. And then from here, I can still get the arm across for an arm bar. Just tie it up over there and put the leg choke on. It's difficult to show this, but you can see again, the arm bar from here is just step and slide. Okay, so that knees, if you see there, that knees on this side of his body, it's not over. It's here, it makes it, makes it a clean pull. Or, as I pull him, I can let my left leg come underneath him. To here. Pull him over the top of me, so you can see my left leg underneath. And then from there I've got the leg choke. And just squeeze the thighs. Both ways, you can go both ways on the left or the right on that. Uh, one of the big wrestling things is, we turn around and place the is to pull the foot. If I want to just get into the back and go from there, pull the foot. And that puts me in a good position again. So you see the opposite way. And here, so just grab hold of the ankle there. What well, the rest of the time to do is come up and pull it to there. And you just turn around and see the you know, back of the camera. And pull it up and tighten it to there. Okay? And feed through, grab the arm, pull the arm up and then just topple over. All we're looking at doing really is grabbing the arm, grabbing the foot, just pulling it over. Well, although it seems a bit of a silly technique, what it's actually going to do is pull him onto his back. As it pulls him onto his back, then I can go in for different positions from there. So just pull him back, come to there. Uh, the opposite way is to feed through here, Cross his face and grab his arm. Grab underneath his arm. Yeah, see my arm here. Hello. There. Pull. Push. Okay. Have a look at it again. See this comes to here. Grab underneath and pull the arm from under in there, and then just push forward. Or. If you grab the boat, if I come to here and secure his elbow and grab his foot, you see I've got his foot here again, and grab his elbow, just, just to turn him. Once I've turned him up, I'm going to different positions. One of the ones that's uh, a little bit superfluous to this, but we'll do it anyway, uh, which is uh, just come down a bit now. I said. Which is the judo one, which is the... Uh, we'll just take that off. I'll take that off so you can see it clearer. This is where they're just sitting on top here. Again, you can punch and attack. What we're doing from here is either... It's just hooking the arm here and coming forward to this position here. Hooking the head and pulling in for the arm bar. Look at it from the uh, face of the camera. From here, hook this foot into there and hook into the arm here. Cut off and you'll just end up down this position here. And then just bring that in front of the face and pull into the arm bar. Let's try that once more. Okay, so you come right over the top, hook the arm. There. This kind of technique is, uh, is not really so much for a street situation, it's more for sparring. And it's part of the, the kind of ground fighting chess. Um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a technique that might fall in outside, it's some, someone might be in that position, but more likely it's just for playing around in the gym. But having said that, Neil Adams won the World Championship with it against some of the top competitors in the world. So it works well against compliancy. Just to finish then, we're going to do some, a couple of drills. But again, these are just drills that we work on. You should make your own drills up. You should drill all the different techniques. And if you don't drill them, don't expect them to work for you. You know, you don't want to be uh, a sofa fighter. You want to be someone that actually goes out and does the techniques thousands of times. I'll take a whole session and isolate one technique and do it thousands of times to get it right for me. Um, and although I'm not the most aesthetic bloke in the world, I make it work. And that's the most important thing. 
I'm not out to win prizes for a flowery technique. I'm out, I'm out to win survival situations. So, you know, don't worry too much about convention. Just, work, just think about workability. These are just a couple of things that me and Alan work on. Um, but like I say, you can work on any one. But you need to repeat the techniques thousands of times. Um, and when, once you've done that, you need, to, you need to be working them against somebody who's trying to tear you in your arse. You need to work it against somebody who's trying to tear you off the planet. Have a look at the Animal Day video, part one and two, and see the techniques working there against people who are fighting to stop them. These are techniques, you know, especially the chokes and the bars. The techniques have worked, you know, hundreds of times. The, bar, the, the chokes, hundreds of times outside. Lots and lots of times. They're very, very effective. But they're no good if you have to think about them. You have to work them so hard that they're instinct. This is just a couple of ideas anyway. From, from a kneeling position, from, uh, from kneeling from here. We're just going to come in the knee, go for the choke. Come in the opposite side, come in the knee, go for the choke. Yeah. Okay, this needs to be quick. You get the choke straight on. Yeah. And again, you can move to here. Now, you can complete the movement from there if you want. Uh, you should do them as many as you can. And also from this position, turning to a base bar. Just, just turning, getting that turn nice and quick. And then to complete the movement. Look at that again, just from a slight angle. Just coming from here to there. As soon as you come back up again. Also, it needs a bit flatter. Just to work on going around the body. Okay. Getting used to touching things as you go around. Find the location of the, the arm, the feet, the head, and keeping close to it. You've got to be like a second skin on it. Right. That's the end of the, the final in the uh, ground fighting series. That's volume six. Volume three, four, five, and six won't work very well without volumes one and two. So I'm aware that a lot of people will shoot off and uh, do, the, do the choking and the barring, but they'll have no concept of uh, pins and escaping. So it's no good, you need your base. You've got to have your base. So don't ignore the bedrock. The most important thing in this is learning to control the opponent on the floor. Then once you've learned to control him and move from pin to pin, from side four quarter to Kesekitami to jackknife to reverse Kesekitami to upper four quarter and then round the body the other side, then you've got to learn to escape from the same techniques. So if someone grabs you in a headlock and pulls you on his back in a Kesekitami, you know, in a, in, a, in a kind of innate scar hold, you can escape from it, you know how to escape from it. Otherwise these techniques are worthless. So what you've got to do is make sure that you take your time, get your basics, and then move on to this stuff. Spend hours on your pins, then move on to the, the chokes, the bars, the neutral knees, etc. Anyway, thanks very much again for listening, um, and I hope that the tapes have helped you.